Lynn, are you there? She'll be right back with us. Um, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to the Hub Certification and Regional Resource Webinar today. Uh, we're being hosted by DIR and the Comptroller's Historically Underutilized Business Program. Next slide, please, Deb. Today's agenda will cover uh, hub certification. It'll cover the statewide hub program at the Comptroller's Office, our hub certification. Uh, with us today, we have special guests. We have our uh, Memorandum of Agreement, uh, Dallas Fort Worth Minority Supplier Development Council, Andrew Nash. We have El Paso Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, um, Terry Reed. And as a special guest, we have our regional small business resource, which is the Small Business Development Center at UTSA in San Antonio, Richard Cifuentes. Thank you all for being with us today. Um, hold your questions or send them in by chat. I think, Tom, that's how we're doing the questions, right? Uh, yes, that is correct. Put your questions in the question box and we will answer them at the end. Okay. So, um, Lynn had trouble getting on again, so I, I don't know if she's gotten back on. Are you back on, Lynn? Okay, so I know she's trying. So um, today, uh, Lynn is going to help me present today. So we're both hosting today. So please um, take your notes. We've got a lot of great information today. And thank you for joining us. Next slide. As I said before, our guest speakers today are Andrew Nash, the Director of Operations for Dallas Fort Worth Minority Supplier Development Council, Terry Reed, who's the de Director of the MBDA Business Center in El Paso, and Richard Cifuentes, the Director of UTSA Small Business Development Center at the University of Texas at San Antonio. Next slide. So with that, let's get started. Um, the Comptroller of Public Accounts was originally created in 1835. Our Comptroller today is Glenn Hager, and he was elected in 2014. As the Comptroller of Public Accounts for the state of Texas, he's the chief steward of the state's finances. He's also the one who collects the taxes. He's the chief accountant and chief revenue estimator for the state. And all these duty means he's the chief treasurer for all state government. The Comptroller's Office administers other programs, but today we're going to be focusing on the statewide historically underutilized business program, which we you will hear us talk about the hub program. We at Statewide Hub strive to connect the vendors and the purchasers to con in contract opportunities of goods and services. Next slide, please. As I said, we strive to connect the vendors with state purchasing and in contract opportunities. What this means is we work with the vendors, provide them education and training, guide them in the marketing tips to meet the state purchasers and the, in, in their contracting opportunities. Next slide. The statewide hub program is a small business advocate. We provide training and marketing tools to assist hubs. We certify the small businesses as hubs and we follow the rules and statutes that govern the hub program. State entities provide a good faith effort to include hubs in small businesses in the procurement process. Keep in mind the statewide hub program is a marketing outreach program. It is not a set aside program. Next slide, please. So as I said a minute ago, the hub certification is a marketing tool to assist your small business to sell to the state. What that means is we help, we train and educate the small businesses to use their ability and their services and products, introduce them to the hub coordinators and guide them on tools to compete within the state's procurement process. 
It is the hub's responsibility to market your business to the state agency and the state university. It's not their, it's not only their responsibility to find you. Make it easy for them to find you if you are a state, if you're a hub. Next slide. Statewide hub program will certify the small businesses. Requirements for certification are as listed below. The small business must be 51% owned and have complete control, 51% control of the day-to-day -day operations. The owner must, or the owner may be Asian Pacific American, Black American, Hispanic American, Native American Indian, American woman, and service disabled veteran with a 20% service disability. There is a federal letter from the Department of Defense, I believe it is, and they will give you a letter stating that that is the service disability that the veteran has. That is a letter that we use, that we request to verify that you have the 20% service disability. Next slide. The hub certification is a four year certification. It's free. What we guarantee is as a hub certified small business, you will be included in the state agency and state university procurements. We provide a good faith effort that the competitive process allows for the small business to participate. Um, certification will ask that you put together your NIGP profile description, the National Institute of Governmental Purchasers um, are the class and item numbers that the state uses for classifying procurements. The hub directory listing. With the hub certification, you will receive a free hub directory listing. That listing includes the vendor profile with the NIGP description. You have free participation in state economic development forums and trainings within the agencies and the state universities. There are free networking events that the agencies and universities provide. Keep in mind that those are listed on, they, they get posted on the hub calendar. And so if you're looking for those events, contact the agency, contact statewide hub, or look in the statewide calendar. Next slide. The centralized master bidders is considered, bidders list is considered the state's vendor list. There is a $70 annual fee. Within that master bidders list, the hub directory is listed. However, the state purchasers are required to go into the centralized master bidders list to do their searches for vendors in their procurements. The link to the free certification is as follows. We have a toll-free number that you can call for information assistance at the Statewide Hub Program. And there's a direct email box to the Statewide Hub Program. So that contact information is there. Next slide. The Statewide Hub Program maximizes its certifications by partnering with local government entities and nonprofit organizations that are also committed to the small businesses. We work together, we share the same standards, and the requirements for certification are the same. A list of our memorandums or agreement are on the, on the link as stated there. Next slide. Our memorandums of agreement also provide certifications to their small businesses. As a courtesy, the small business certifications share the information with the statewide hub program for an additional free certification. We work very closely with the MOAs and we share outreach, education, and training opportunities. Next slide. One of our memorandums agreement is the Dallas Fort Worth Minority Supplier Development Council. And today, Andrew Nash is with us and he will be telling us about what they are working on and what they do for the small businesses and how we partner together. Andrew? 
Thank you, Maya, for the introduction. I want to welcome everyone to this webinar. I want to thank DIR and the State's Texas Hub Program for hosting this program. I'm Andrew Nash, Director of Operations with the Dallas-Fort Worth Minority Supplier Development Council. Next slide. The Dallas-Fort Worth Minority Supplier Development Council is part of the National Minority Supplier Development Council, which is headquartered out of New York. There are 23 affiliate councils throughout the United States, and we provide certification uh, for the Fortune 500 companies, as well as uh, some public sector agencies and school districts. Again, um, three council service uh, Texas. So again, the Dallas-Fort Worth Minority Supplier Development Council, we certify the suppliers, ethnic minority suppliers that are in the North Texas area. We do have another council that, that services Houston and Galveston area called the Houston Minority Supplier Development Council. And we have a third council here that certifies in Austin, in Austin, uh, El Paso, New Mexico, and Oklahoma. Um, so, so there are three councils that service this area. So if you're looking uh, for, you may not find the DFW MSDC certification, you may fall in those other areas and look for your local service area. Again, the council provides educational programs and workshops, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, we offer MBE to MBE business opportunities. Again, as Maya said, we do provide the state of Texas certification. So once you meet our requirements, which are real similar to the states, uh, just want to make sure we certify ethnic minority companies. Uh, once you get through our certification process, we'll send your information to the state and you will go on to the state's program and be qualified for the HUB program. We also provide here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area the SBE certification. So if you're doing business at DFW Airport, uh, Dallas County, City of Fort Worth, Dallas, and, and other entities that accept SBE, you will have that certification. And again, we do run an MBDA center, and I'll talk a little bit uh, about that as, as we go. <clears throat> again, as a council, we're here to assist. Uh, we definitely work with uh, the state of Texas and DIR. We put on some great events. So the way that we assist small businesses and and uh, hubs, and this time we do a few different things. First thing we do is we do expos. Uh, we do a hard hat construction expo that we have here in the North Texas area uh, in March of every year where we bring uh, general contractors as well as uh, minority businesses together. Not only um, are they private sector folks there, we have the city of Dallas, we have Texas Facilities Commission, we have a whole lot of folks that come through that are looking. So we, again, we assist those uh, companies that are hard, are construction related with our hard hat expo. The other thing we do, we partner with Senator Royce West, we partner with um, DIR, we partner with the State of Texas Hub Program, and we bring all those things together in our Access Business Expo that we do every year. Um, part of that, it's the three three part that we do. The first part is we, again, partner with the Comptroller's Office. We have some workshops for hubs, free workshops on Monday that you could come in if you've never done business with the state. We're going to assist you along with the uh, hub coordinators from across the state on how to do business. So we have probably about 12 or so workshops that you can go through that morning that run concurrently that you'll have an opportunity to to partake in. The second part of that is that we, we partner with Senator Royce West and we provide a hub uh, spot bid fair where all the agencies come out and they provide uh, opportunities. They bring bids that you pick up on Monday, you turn in on Tuesday. Thanks to DIR and the other folks that are on the planning committee, we have a portal that we put those bids out so you'll be able to get those bids prior to the event that you can go on, take off, and actually come in and turn in on Monday once the bid fair opens. So it's a great uh, opportunity for you to bring your hub participation. And we have about 88 state agencies that show up. Last year we had about 88 state agencies that showed up to participate. So if you really want to know how to do business with hubs and some free training, we provide that. Here at the council, we provide other opportunities to come together with our uh, corporations. So on day two of the access uh, participation, we have one-on-ones, we have round tables, uh, we have booths for the corporations that you can also attend. Um, again, we try to assist corporate, small businesses, our, our minority businesses, get in front of those right people. Again, at the council, we do we do other things. We do buyers luncheons where we have the actual buyers come out, meet with the suppliers over lunch. 
We do ISD day events where we bring, we invite out ISDs from the uh, Fort Worth side, from the Dallas side, and we have two events, one we do in Fort Worth, one we do in Dallas, that brings out at least 12 to 15 independent school districts so we can introduce them. With independent school districts, some do, uh, most of all the school districts take the hub certification and they have opportunities as well as uh, some of the uh, school districts take the, the, in a, the Dallas Fort Worth Minority Supplier Development Council certification as well uh, in order for them to do business. Again, uh, the other thing, next slide. The other thing, uh, being part of the council, you have access to our MBDA center. The council uh, is one of the one of the few uh, one of the few folks that that do run an MBDA center. One of the few councils that do run it. So we have an MBDA center. We've been running. This is our second um, contract with them. So again, as you see up front, you see kind of performance. The MBDA center uh, they provide training workshops. They do a monthly breakfast, but the main thing, you know, they want to assist you with access to capital, uh, business consulting, as well as contracts. As you can see here um, with the numbers awarded, that's our 2019 performance. Uh, being part of our council, you have access to the Minority Business Development Business Center. Again, we have a great team over there that works there, and they'll be glad to assist you. Next slide, please. Again, this is just a little more background about the council. What what do we do? Uh, last year, this is our 2019 snapshot. Last year, we helped minority businesses secure over $18 billion in, in, in contracts. We have over 980 certified suppliers. Uh, again, uh, we help employ a lot of folks in the area. Along with our plan room, we're probably here in the North Texas area. Our plan room last year disseminated out over 7,000 bids. And again, we service 76 uh, North Texas cities and 18 counties. Next slide. Again, just kind of the background of what the, what the council, as far as suppliers, um, again, 51% uh, controlled, owned, and managed company and ethnic minority. And um, that's really the, the U.S. citizen. Um, that's pretty much the application. If you're HUB certified and you're ethnic minority, the the applications are really similar that you can do. But again, here at the council, we're here to help. We're glad with our relationship with the uh, state comptroller's office and the other uh, agencies that are out there. So if you need anything or have any questions, you can uh, send those in through the question and we'll answer those at the end. Maya? Thanks, Andrew. Sorry, I didn't take it off of me. My apologies. Thanks, Andrew. Okay. Next, we have Terry Reed from the El Paso Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Terry. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. And I hope that you're all staying safe and healthy. Thank you for being with us on the webinar today. And thank you to the um, Comptroller's Office and DIR for inviting us to be part of this webinar today. Your El Paso Hispanic Chamber has been um, in existence for 30 years. And what we do is, in addition to the Chamber of Commerce things that we do, is we run three entrepreneurial technical assistance centers. These help businesses through every phase of business be able to get started and find opportunities. And I'll tell you a little bit about those three centers. Next slide. So the vision of the chamber is to continue to be the core component for the El Paso region in fostering entrepreneurial economic development where our existing companies are growing and our entrepreneurs are reaching new horizons and where small minority and women owned businesses are thriving and outpacing other markets. Yeah. Next slide. <clears throat> Our entrepreneurial technical assistants um, are comprised of our Women's Business Border Center. This is an SBA funded technical center that works with startup businesses and women owned businesses. 
our Minority Business Development Agency, or MBDA Business Center funded through Commerce, is the center that manages any business that's over uh, three years old and minority owned. And then our Minority Women's Enterprise Diversity Center is the newest um, center that we've had. And it is more of a nationwide center providing trainings and information. And let me tell you just a little bit more about them. If you'll go to the next slide. So when businesses come or entrepreneurs uh, come to the chamber, you don't have to be a member to be able to participate in any of our technical centers. You just have to be a person that has a dream or would like to find out more information about how to become a business. If you are zero to three years old in that process, we're gonna route you directly to our Women's Business Border Center. This is a technical center, like I mentioned, of the SBA. We've had this technical center at the chamber for 19 years. And what our business specialists do is conduct one-on-one -on -one business counseling for anybody that would like to start a business or is in the first three years of business. We do business startup trainings, entrepreneurial trainings, and we hold networking forums like our annual Women's Business Symposium, our Dancing Backwards in High Heels, and our Dynamic Women to Women Luncheon. Um, as I'm sure everybody knows that's on the call, things are gonna be done a lot differently. So our networking, <clears throat> is all being done virtually and by webinar um, to be able to make sure that everybody does stay safe. All of our counselors are also counseling by phone or by webinar, teleconference. They'll personally evaluate your business, take a look at the ownership information, talk with you about developing your business plan, and then guide you on where you can find financing um, and help you to market your business. Next slide, please. Our MBDA Business Center has been in existence in El Paso since 2008. We are also a top performing center, one of the top 10 in the country. Um, the objective through the MBDA centers are to provide business and technical guidance to any emerging and existing minority owned business. So we know small businesses are all different, startups have different needs than growing businesses. So this is the center and our business specialists will focus on helping existing businesses to access capital, to connect with procurement opportunities, uh, look at certifications as a way to grow, because we all know half of the battle is getting the certification and the other half is learning what to do once you've received it. How do you market that? Who recognizes it? So our business specialists will help you to be able to kind of wade through and navigate through that maze. And then next slide. Our newest kid on the block, the Minority Women's Enterprise Center, we've had this for two years, also funded through Commerce. This is to empower minority women across the country to achieve their entrepreneurial dreams. We help them through a series of um, podcasts and webinars and blogs. And if they need to speak with a business development specialist, we also have several in that department using all of the resources available to them, not only through the chamber, but through all of our partners, through um, uh, the other agencies that we have as well, the SBA, uh, through Texta, through the Comptroller, through DIR. So um, please feel free to give us a call and talk with us about any uh, phase of business that you happen to be in, and we would be delighted to help you through the process. We also um, are a certifier for the Comptroller's Office. It, um, the process is always the same. It's a four-year certification. We will help you then identify all of the different agencies um, in addition to all the Texas state agencies that recognize the state hub. Like I mentioned earlier, the cities, municipalities, school districts in our area all recognize the state hub as well. So 
as soon as you get that certification, you have a whole new pool of potential customers and clients. And we make it our business to help you get business with those um, clients. So I look forward to your questions. Again, thank you so much for being part of this. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you, Terry. Next slide, please. Next, we have Richard Cifuentes. He's the director of the UTSA Small Business Development Center. Richard? Great, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about the Small Business Development Center model and, and what we're doing uh, for at UTSA. Next chart. So the SBDCs are a nationwide program. They're a program of the SBA. We were funded by the SBA as well as, well as the states. And there are over a thousand SBDCs across the United States. So there's probably one in your backyard for you small business owners that could take advantage of the assistance that they provide. At the University of Texas, we operate, we have one of the lead centers and that operates under the Southwest Texas SBDC border network. And that's all housed under the Institute of for Economic Development at the University of Texas San Antonio. The Southwest Texas Border SBDC Network consists of 10 field centers, and I'll show you a chart later on to show that where those are located, and four specialty centers in addition to a research component. And the lead center, as well as my UTSA SBDC, are all located downtown uh, UT at UTSA downtown in San Antonio, Texas. And basically we provide resources to help people start this, but also grow existing companies. Next chart. Next chart, please. Next chart, please. Thank you. The SBDCs provide, if you could go back one chart, the SBDCs provide two core services. Uh, they provide consulting, one-on-one, -on -one, no cost, confidential consulting for the life of the business. So if you are a small business owner or an entrepreneur and you either are looking, you have an idea that you want to start a business or vet your idea, or you may be a company of small business that has 500 employees and been around for 70 years and you're looking to sustain or expand operations, the small business development centers can help you. And what we do is we match you up with one of our consultants they can become your confidential business consultant for the life of the business. And if you're in business for 30 years, they can meet with you every day of the week at no cost to you whatsoever. The other thing that we do is we provide lots of education and training, a number of workshops for the benefit of entrepreneurs and small business owners. In fact, last year we did over 250 workshops. Of course, with this current uh, environment that we're working in, we've had to change our approach and right now we're doing training via webinar and, and remotely and we've got for example 14 workshops scheduled for the month of may we also provide a professional referral network we ac have access to research resources and as i said our focus is on ed education training and consulting 98 percent of my training is no cost and my consulting is completely free next chart This is just a small sampling of the services that an SPDC can provide to you, uh, whether it's training or one-on-one -on -one advising. And so many times we, we get involved with working with clients on market research, business planning, we do QuickBooks training, and then we have also a number of, of courses and, and workshops that we conduct for growth businesses as well. Next chart. Next chart. The, as I mentioned, the Southwest Texas Border SBDC Network is, is the lead center there at UTSA. So we have 10 field centers, including the one at UTSA. And you can see where they're located there, San Antonio, Alpine, Austin, Corpus Christi, Eagle Pass, El Paso, Laredo, the Rio Grande Valley, San Angelo, and Victoria. And with these 10 field centers, we're able to cover and provide support to entrepreneurs in that 79 county area. I'd also like to mention that because of Texas's size, they actually have four regions. So 
the Southwest Texas border is one region. There's three other regions. The University of Houston, Texas Gulf Coast SBDC region network center is located at the University of Houston, and they have a number of field centers as well that support those counties in those areas. Uh, the Northwest Texas SBDC located at Lubbock, Texas at Texas Tech University has a field, a, a number of field centers to support their counties. And then you have the North Texas SBDC, which is managed by the Dallas Community College, which makes up the fourth network. Next chart. Next chart, please. This is the local territory covered by the University of Texas San Antonio SBDC. It covers 11 counties, Atascosa, Bandera, Barra, Bear County, Comal, Frio, Gillespie, Guadalupe, Kendall, Kerr, and Medina, and Wilson. So again, I know this is a, a statewide presentation. So basically, if you're in an, an area, you could probably just go in, city, Google SBDC with your city, and it'll bring up the SBDC that is serving your territory. Next chart, please. More recently, my team has been very much involved in providing financial assistance for the SBA emergency funding. So I'd like to talk briefly about those. Uh, one of the things I'd like to mention is if you have an existing SBA 7A or 504 loan, there's a program called the Debt Deferment or Relief Program in which the SBA will actually make six months of payments for the benefit of that small business owner. So for six months, SBA will pay your lender if you have an existing 7A or 504 loan. So definitely, if you haven't heard from your lender or from the SBA, then you definitely want to contact your lender to, to look into that. And that program is good through December 31st, 2020. There's also an SBA Express Bridge Loan Program for 25,000. That goes runs through December 31st, 2020. And so that's a, it doesn't require any collateral and it's a short term type of immediate relief loan. The biggest bulk of our time has been spent working with companies applying for the Pay Pay Check Protection Program, the PPP, which you might have heard so much about. That is a program, an SBA program that was part of the stimulus package that is used, is a loan that is used for the benefit of small businesses that you will apply directly to an SBA approved lender, whether it's a credit union or a bank. And it's to be used for eight weeks to pay payroll as well as operating costs, such as mortgage interest, utilities, uh, lease, and so on. And if you use it properly for those eight weeks and you can document it, you may ask for forgiveness for that loan. So that basically it becomes free money. Now let's say you've lost some staff and you are only able to ask for forgiveness for a portion of the loan, not all of it. Let's say out of the $100,000, you can expend 75,000. Well, then you just give the other 25,000 back or you can roll that 25,000 into a 1% interest loan. So that's the benefit of it. But the key is to document and make sure for that eight weeks that the goal is to make payroll and to make sure you're using paying operating cost. Operating costs can be no more than 70, more than no more than 25% of the loan, total loan. And the payroll costs have to be as a, a minimum of 75% of that loan. So again, if you can't reach the 75%, then you just ask for forgiveness for that amount that you can. The Economic Injury Disaster Loan is the other loan that we've been uh, very much involved in. And that is a loan that you would apply as a small business owner directly to the SBA on their website. And that loan, they were making an advance very quickly of up to $10,000. So it's $1,000 per employee, up to $10,000, and that would be free grant money. And then they would evaluate your application, to determine the the loan, uh, the amount of idle loan that that you would actually qualify for. So in other words, there's an advanced piece of it that's completely free, even if you don't take the idle loan. And then there's the loan uh, that would be a low interest, 3.75% interest. So uh, this is mainly what we've been busy for the last five weeks, assisting small business owners with and applying for these loans and answering questions regarding that. Next chart, please. 
This is a list of SBA resources. As you can see, it's phone numbers and email addresses and websites to answer any questions regarding the loan programs of the SBA for the disaster funding that I just mentioned, the Stimulus Act. And so these are good points of contact and, and addresses for you. And the last chart, please. So the UTSA SBDCs at the Institute for Economic Development stood up a special COVID business recovery accelerator to handle the, the volume of requests from small business owners to assist them in applying for the emergency disaster funding. And so you've got two phone numbers there, you've got two email addresses and web websites for information, and that's where you can go to reach assistance and have questions answered and maybe assistance in applying for these loans if you are unable to do it uh, yourself. So we've been busy kind of walking people through the process, answering questions and things like that. So these are two good uh, referral sources of information if you are in the UTSA uh, Levin County footprint. And if you are not, then reach out to your local SBDC and they're definitely doing the same thing. Thank you. Back to you, Maya. Okay. We do have several questions. Um, I am Lynn, so if it's okay, I'll just uh, go to the question box and start uh, reading some questions and we'll get some answers. First question, I have CMBL slash hub certification. I want to learn how to partner with larger companies that have been awarded bids and require a hub partner. Okay, so there, there's a couple of answers, responses to that one. First, the CMBL, um, as a vendor on the CMBL, you will get notifications from the Electronic State Business Daily where state agencies will post their procurements. And based on your NIGP profile, which is very important to complete correctly, um, the ESBD system will talk to the vendors on the CMBL to notify them of procurements when that's available. To provide networking um, through these kinds of events, even if they're webinars, um, there's list of people who attend. Um, you also should contact hub coordinators. Uh, once you identify your NIGP profile, um, there are tools that can be used to find the agencies that are generally buying the goods or services that you're providing. Um, contacting those hub coordinators, introducing your business, yourself and your business to the agency and state universities that you're available, you want to do work with them, find out what they have available, what education, what networking they have, and um, provide them with some information on who your business is. That's the first step. And, and from there, you would, you would go depending on what the agency coordinate, hub coordinator says. Okay, uh, next question. I believe this was during Andrew's uh, presentation. What if you're a member of another council? So, so again, yes, if you're a member of another council of uh, HMSDC or SMSDC, then you do have the, uh, I think we think my has the MOUs with the Houston Council as well as the Southwest Minority Supplier Development Council. So if you're part of any of those councils and uh, if you're part of the Houston Council, you're part of the Southwest Council, and you want to um, get on our list there in the Dallas and be affiliated with the Dallas Counter Council, we have what we have called a subscription application. So you can go to our website at www.dfwmsdc.com, and um, and you can click on the subscription application that gives you information about being affiliated with the council if you belong to any of the council, not only the ones in Texas or any of the 23 councils. Okay, so it was pushed from 1.30 to 2. Okay. Oh. What? All right, that's my Thank you. Okay, uh, next question. I am on mute. Does the DFW Minority Supplier Development Council include Caucasian women business owners? Okay, so I'm scheduled for an MBDA call at the same time, but I'll, I'll try to- Terry, 
Is I'll, that you? I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll be on your call. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, at the same time. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. Let, let me reread that question. Uh, does the DFW Minor Minority Supplier Development Council include Caucasian women business owners? No. Uh, no, no, we don't. We only certify ethnic minority uh, companies, business owners that are 51% controlled, owned, and managed by ethnic minorities. Um, there is another certification out there called the Women's Business Council Southwest. So if they're uh, non-minority women, they would be able to uh, join the Women's Business Council Southwest. Or you can look at so general certification. This is Terry Reed. Our yeah. Women's Center is a certifier for the federal woman-owned small business. So all women of any ethnicity are considered minority through the federal program. They can also call Statewide Hub and we'll guide them in the right direction to find the resources they need. Okay, next question. So we get a $10,000 loan that must be used in eight weeks before we get the remainder of the PPE loan that may be free if it is forgiven? Okay, so if, you, if you're referring to $10,000 idle loan, uh, which was an advance, okay, so that's free money, if I'm understanding it correctly, and then you received a PPP on, okay, the $10,000 uh, in terms of forgiveness, the $10,000 advance, which is free money from the idol, will be backed out of the PPP forgiveness amount. So your forgiveness amount will be $10,000 less. Um, and so, um, and the other, the other important thing to remember too is make sure that you're using the PPP funds and the idol funds for different purposes. So even if you were using them both for payroll, make sure they're use, you're using them for different months or weeks of payroll. So it's 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 important to keep not double dip in terms of using the same monies for the same uh, reason. So hopefully that answers the question. Okay, next question: How do you get more exposure for your company if you are a hub? I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? Yeah, yeah. The question is, is how do you get more exposure for your company if you are a hub? Okay. This is Terry. Um, I'd like to take a stab at that because we do work with businesses um, all the time about how to go about marketing their company. One of the first things I would say is make sure you have built a great capability statement. This is like a resume on your company. It lists the types of certifications you have. You should proudly put that on there if you're a state hub business. Um, and then I would say register on as many websites for agencies that recognize the state hub. In our area, the city recognizes it, the county, all of our surrounding municipalities, the school districts, the UT serve it, I mean the UT departments, uh, UTEP, UT Austin, UT Permian Basin, they all recognize State Hub. So I would do some homework as to who those procurement officers are, build a great capability statement, and then make sure that you're sending it out via email to those people to let them know that you are in the CMBL. Because once you get that certification, the work really does come in marketing it and making sure that people know. I mean, before it could, it was gonna be expos and spot bid fairs. Those are still gonna happen. They're gonna happen probably a little bit differently, but right now is a great time to be building that database of who these buyers are, who all recognizes the state hub and start outreaching to them. Okay, anybody have anything to add other presenters to that question? No, I would just, this is Richard C. Fuentes. I would I very much agree with what she said. And I would just add that 
uh, one of the things that you should do, you know, in marketing yourself is, is do a little research, check some of these organizations or agencies out and, and get a feel for what they do uh, put bid out, bid request out for. Uh, you want to go ahead and, and register with those that frequently ask for your types of services or products. So do a little research so that you focus on those entities that might want to uh, do business with you. So to add to that a little bit, the state of uh, the statewide hub program provides trainings on resources and tools to help you provide the research that Richard's talking about. Um, the LBB website has a contract search where you can go in and search by um, NIGP code, by purchasing category, and by contractor to see who has a contract with that agency or to find out which agencies are purchasing the goods and services you provide. You can find out when those contracts are up, uh, when they would be. Oh. Okay, Maya, did, are you there, Maya? Yes, I'm here. Oh, there she is. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought you faded out. Are you, is that question now answered? Um, I think so. If I faded out, if anyone will contact Statewide Hub, I can guide them in that direction and provide them some tools. Excellent. Okay. Uh, next question. Does the payment deferring apply also for the PPP program? On the on the PPP, uh, there is a uh, uh, six months to one year deferment. So if it it did roll into if you decided to go ahead and end up rolling the balance that you could not uh, appropriately document to for forgiveness, then yes, uh, it would roll to a one percent loan, and the deferment is anywhere from six months to one year. So the only thing I caution people about is you know, if it's a large loan that you're ended, end up deferring, remember, even though it's a 1% loan, you know, if you have only 12 months to pay it, when payments do come uh, or come due, then, you know, make sure that, that you can afford that payment. And that's why I say, if you can't for, forgive all of it, then maybe you might consider uh, an option of sending it that portion back. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, what about state agencies that do not use ESBD? So this is Maya. So state agencies are required to post their procurements over $25,000 on the electronic state business daily. State universities have a different, usually they post it on their websites. So for state universities, you would need to contact the, them directly. Okay, next question. We are a certified Texas hub and have done business in the past for uh, TDCJ and Texas A&M. When I search the vendor performance report, I see no results. Is it up to the Texas agency to grade us? Is this something we need to request they do? It is up to the state agency purchasers or contract managers to grade you, it is correct. Um, generally, they will do that if there are issues. Um, they are encouraged to put that on there when it is a positive result as well. So I would suggest that you contact that contract manager that you're dealing with and, and ask them to give you a grade. Okay, um, next question. If hub certification is intended to help small businesses, I do not understand why there is a cost $70 to get listed on CMBL. Shouldn't this process be free as a help to small business? So yes, hub certification is a free service. It is a process that you complete with your application and your business documentation, and the statewide hub program will give you that certification. The centralized master bidders list is considered the state's vendor list. So in order for a company to want to be listed on the CMBL, you would pay a $70 fee. That $70 fee is for administrative services of that, of that system, um, as well as 
it allows the electronic state business daily to notify vendors on the CMBL of procurement opportunities. So you would not be searching for an opportunity based on your NIGP profile if you are listed on the CMBL. The electronic state Dis business daily system would search for you and provide you an email notification of a procurement. The hubs would not listed on the CMBL or vendors not listed on CMBL can still do business with the state by searching their own, um, providing their own searches on the electronic state business daily or going directly to the agencies to see what procurements they have coming up. Okay. Um, next question, uh, please state the full name of the NIE, I believe it's NIGP profile and where is the profile located? You can find a link on the statewide hub program page. The NIGP is the National Institute of Governmental Purchasing Classifications. Okay, we've got about three minutes left. So um, next question, I am interested in state health program work. And that, that's a statement, but not a question. I think they're looking for resources for state health program work. So for um, without enough information, I think the best thing to do is call the statewide hub program. Um, you can ask for me or one of the state, um, the hub staff there to help you and guide you. There's tools avail available for you to find the health agencies that would be using your services. Okay, next question. We are in Abilene, Texas. Do we coordinate with Texas Tech? S BDC, we have just been certified with their help. Uh, yes, that would be the, the proper office to go to. They have uh, consultants and training uh, specifically geared for the small business owners and entrepreneurs, just as we do. So yes, that would be a great location. Okay. Okay, and Tom, this is Lynn. Hi, everybody. This is Lynn Hotty. I was finally able to connect. Don't forget, we're the IT agency. Um, we're going to go to the next slide, and we're going to wrap up today's session. So you will see that we have two upcoming events scheduled. The next one will be May 27th. And again, it will be a series with some of the state of Texas minority trade organizations. Um, so we'll have a different pool of entities meeting with us the next time. Um, and then we, for the Hub Talk Series 5, we're going to plan a construction opportunities related series. And again, that'll be on June 10th. We will have registration information posted to the dir.texas.gov website under the calendar. So if you want to go out and um, register for either one of those or both of those events, you can. That should roll out later today. And then on the next slide, um, we just wanted to point out, and I know several of y'all have asked where are the previous sessions and all, are, are all of the sessions different? Yes, all of these sessions have been unique and have addressed different topics. And we have posted the previous recordings on the DIR website on our hub page. Um, so if you need help finding those, you can contact me or you can contact the dir.hub email at dir.hub at dir.texas.gov and we can direct you to those recordings. Um, and then on the next slide, you will see the contact information for today's presenters. And they've all been wonderful resources and we really would like to thank Andrew and Terry and Richard for taking time out of their day uh, today to share with y'all some helpful information. They're all valuable resources and we rely on them and they rely on us. It, we're like a three-legged stool. We can't do it without you guys. Um, so we all need one another. So they're wonderful resources. Don't hesitate in reaching out and contacting them. You have their phone numbers and their website addresses or email addresses. You have my contact information and you also have Maya's contact information. And again, we're going to be posting this recording to the DIR website on our hub page. Um, so hopefully that will roll out in about a week. We will also put, post 
all of the questions and answers that you have asked today. We'd like to thank you for joining us and have a good day.